mold release on tires. Is that fact or fiction? Let's talk about that. Good Moto Morning. I'm your host, Eric. Welcome to another episode of Crackhead's Garage. On this channel, we discuss all things motorcycle-oriented and scooter. We talk about safety gear and how to protect yourself at all times and do some slight gear reviews as well. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Today, we talk about mold release agents that sometimes are found on tires and what my investigation found out about it. And uh, it's kind of a mystery. So hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get cracking. So when you purchase new tires or purchase a brand new motorcycle, have you ever seen kind of a white, crusty, pasty substance on the uh, outside of the tire? If you read your owner's manual, it says to break in the tires gingerly for the first 100 miles, basically scrub them in, in the uh, air quotes term that they use. So let's kind of dig down into that. So I wrote an email to Bridgestone, Dunlop, and Pirelli tires and ask them specifically what do they use on their tires. And let's talk about what, how they responded to me. Okay, Dunlop's reply to me was, Dunlop tires do not use a mold releasing agent. And what I mean by mold releasing agent is they'll spray the tire molds with some sort of substance that's slippery, normally silicone based. So when they're through forming the tire and that hot rubber comes out of that mold, it comes out of the mold without sticking to the mold. Dunlop saying they do not use that. When new tires are fitted, they should not be subjected to maximum power, abrupt lean over or hard cornering until a reasonable run in distance of approximately 100 miles has been covered. This will permit the rider to become accustomed to the feel of new tires or tire combination, find the edge and achieve the optimal road grip for a range of speeds, acceleration and handling use. Be sure to check and adjust inflation pressure to recommended levels after the tire cools for at least three hours following run-in. Remember, new tires will have a very different contact patch and lean over edge. New tires mixing a new tire with a used tire and mixing tread pattern combinations require careful ride evaluations. That's a video for another day, uh, mix and matching tires on the front and rear of the bike. So Dunlop kind of uh, says, no, we don't use it. However, you should be careful when you're scrubbing in your new tires. So <laughs> interesting. Dunlops, which are on my uh, Harley-Davidson Revival, and I'm throwing a few pictures of my tires up on the screen. Okay, Bridgestone, break-in period. In order for your new tires to provide optimum performance, tires should be ridden very cautiously for the first 100 miles in order for the tread surface to be scuffed in and work properly. Directly after new tires are mounted, sudden acceleration, maximum braking, or hard cornering must be avoided. This will allow the rider to adjust to the feel and handling characteristics of the new tire and for the new tire to be scuffed in correctly to achieve optimum grip level. So that kind of parallels uh, Dunlop's uh, quote. But if you notice, uh, Bridgestone did not say, yes, we use a release agent or no, we do not. They were very neutral in their reply to me. Pirelli, Pirelli does not use mold release. These tires are shiny because the general buying public demands that visually a tire look cool, smooth, shiny, and new when they shop for tires in the rack at the dealer. We rely on the smoothness of the mold to get this appearance and to help the tire let go from the mold during production. I'd like to say these tires are like new shoes or motocross boots or a leather jacket as they need a proper break in time regarding getting heat into tires this follows. So what does Eric do? I First of all, you know, when you buy a new bike, you get a lot of uh, brochures for many things within your kit, uh, your owner's guide, things of that nature. There should be in there a brochure from the tire manufacturer regarding your tires that came on the bike you just purchased. First thing I do is read that. Uh, second thing I do is do a visual inspection on it and I look around the tire. Again, take a look at my tires up here. When I get home to ride my bike, the first thing I do is get out either isopropyl alcohol, 50-50 diluted. Why do I use that? Because it cuts through petroleum products and I generously spray the tire down and then scrub it with a Scotch-Brite pad. You know, the one that's in your kitchen for scrubbing stubborn pots and pans. That knocks it off immediately. 
Then I go into the 100 mile break-in period process of scrubbing in the tires on the road. How do I do that? When I'm going down country roads, I just do lazy, crazy eights back and forth uh, to kind of uh, get the full spectrum of the sidewalls of the tire as I'm going down the road. And I know it's annoying to do that for the first 100 miles, but I highly recommend it. If you don't have isopropyl alcohol, my next best suggestion is just go to your kitchen sink and get dishwashing soap. Dawn, palm olive, something like that. Again, these are all designed to be grease cutters for cleaning pots and pans, so they cut right through petroleum products. And uh, you can mix that up in a batch and use it with a Scotch-Brite uh, and scrub your tires, you'll be good to go. After you're done, hose it off. Make sure you get all of that uh, cleaning agent that you're putting on your tires to uh, get them clean. Do another visual inspection and make sure that your tires have gotten all of that agent, whatever it is. Now, there's, it's been suggested that, no, it's not a release agent from the molds, but other people have suggested that possibly the tire manufacturers are spraying on some sort of um, coating to protect it from dry rot. That is slickest not as well. Whether it's a release agent or an anti-dry rot agent of some sort, it, as soon as they get moist and warm up, they become absolutely slick. I have seen in my lifetime three people get brand new tires and driving into the parking lot, and down they go and smash their bike on the ground with a brand new tire. It's no joke, so think about it. For every one incident like that that has turned out really bad, there's been 99 others that hopped on it and rode on down the road and had no issues. Just play it safe, folks, and think about what I'm telling you. I'm giving you some solid advice here that may keep you from bashing yourself up and your, and your brand new bike in the near future. So give it some thought. So let me know in the comments down below, what are your thoughts on these uh, spooge that's all over your brand new tires, whether you're installing new tires or you're buying a new bike. What do you think it is? How have you handled it in your riding career? Be interested to hear everybody's opinion on this topic. It's certainly a gray area. The, the uh, tire manufacturers dance around it, at least with my emails, I got shady answers. And the motorcycle dealers don't really know much either. They kind of uh, say, well, yeah, you should probably scrub it off. Well. Why are you delivering a brand new bike with it on the tires? Why aren't you scrubbing it off to keep your customer base out of harm's way? Just something to think about. I have another batch of hat orders coming. These are gonna be flat bill, and they're gonna be what's called a trucker cap, which is mesh in the back and a snap back. Uh, they'll be here in about two weeks, and I'll do a video on those when they come up for sale. It seems a lot of our UK crowd prefers the flat brim and that's what they rock over there on that side of the world. So if you don't like the flat brim, you can always bend it down to a curve. Don't forget, we have the Odin Glove giveaway. They're not on my bench. I'll throw a picture up here. I'll link a, a video down in below if you would like to win those gloves. Like, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up and uh, make a comment in that video and I will throw your name in the kitty to win those gloves if you would like to win some. And then with that said, there's my ghost dog here in Kraken's Haunted Garage. He's here to tell me to wrap up this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you wanna see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember folks, go riding. It's good for you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.